The DNA Age is uh, a, a wonderful and relevant, very compelling series of articles authored by Amy Harmon and that were published in the New York Times uh, between 2006 and 2008. Everybody's DNA has two strands, but in order for information to get into the DNA or for you to get anything out of the DNA, you have to open it up, which is kind of like a metaphor for the college experience, right? If you stay closed up, and you stay within yourself and you don't explore and you don't do anything and you imagine that everything is going to come to you, you're sort of the most useless DNA molecule on this campus because in order to really reach your full potential, you have to open yourself up. In fact, DNA doesn't open itself up, other things open it. The way Liz Lerman uh, Dance Exchange came to us was through uh, another dean on campus, Dr. Linda K. Palper, Dean of University Studies, and we've been working with them since last fall to really create a vision for how would this look for our incoming freshmen. The reason why they, they came up with this idea of doing this common dance with the freshmen is that a very famous historic video that you can still find on YouTube highlights how protein synthesis works. So they, the idea was to sort of recreate something like that with that kind of energy that could maybe even be used as a teaching tool. What will happen on August 26th is that our students will start off in their preface discussion with their first year orientation guide, FOG for short. Uh, and they will meet with their faculty member and have the discussion about the DNA age. During that time, they will receive a t-shirt uh, that will be used in the afternoon for the dance. And so students will either receive a t-shirt that has an A, C, T, or G and they will form um, what, we, what would be a DNA helix and it will curve down the quad, uh, starting at the top of the quad near Wilson Hall and end down at the bottom of the quad uh, right in front of our new Forbes Performing Arts Center. And then Dr. Carol Herney will be on her bicycle with a camera mounted to her helmet and she will essentially ride her bicycle down the DNA helix, unzipping it as she goes along, which means the student's hands, the hydrogen bonds they form with their hands, will unzip. I went there the day that they had taught the dance to the OPAs. I was truly amazed by the things that the students were saying, because they were saying things like, well, you know, I wasn't really into it at first. I didn't really see it. I didn't get it. I, I was here because I had to be here and I had to learn this dance. But once I saw this whole thing in action, I now see how amazing it is and it makes so much sense to me. At first I didn't get it and then they explained it and thinking about having all those first year students out on the quad just got me so excited thinking that they have this opportunity for this unique interaction with each other um, something that no other first year student has had they get to meet these students dance with them you know just go crazy on the quad where the art meets science I think that's a really interesting idea that a lot of people just don't spend a lot of time realizing that there's art in science and there's science in art. The, the really cool thing about this is, you know, the DNA age is really interesting to read. It's about genetics and stuff like that. Um, and the cool thing about this dance is how it's a physical representation of that. Um, you know, these dance moves are based off of different things relating to genetics. And it's cool to see these moves, how they represent these things. You know, after reading certain things in the DNA age and then doing these dance moves, it's just kind of cool. It's like, wow, like I read about this and now I'm dancing. Like, it, it's, it's a really cool physical representation of what, you know, I've been reading the first years I've been reading. I do believe this is one of those opportunities that if JMU uh, did time capsules, this is one of the things that will go into the time capsule for the next 50 to 100 years. And we'd be able to look back and say, this was something that was unique at JMU.